In my last video, I addressed the fact that one must murder God before they can declare their status amongst the self-deified. This, I believe, has confused a few of you. Someone PM'd me and asked, you say to get rid of the God within, but what about the other gods? Aren't they a part of you, a part of the essence of one's character? My simple response was, yes. Well, do we have to get rid of them too, they asked. Again, a simple response, and that was, no. Okay, maybe I should clarify. The gods are a part of existence, inside and out, and they are aspects of consciousness, reality. For example, from a Hindu perspective, they are one with Brahman, conscious reality. Brahman is moonlight, and the gods, all gods, are reflections of that moonlight off of, of a variety of surfaces, oceans, lakes, ponds, streams, puddles, even droplets. All these lesser surfaces reflect the greater source. Now, the God I say to get rid of is that God, that specific God, you know, Yahweh, that guy from the Bible, the one who came into being 3,000 years ago amongst semi-literate sheep herders. That guy. And why do I say he's got to go? Because he, or a warped version of him, has been pounded into the hearts and minds of those of the Western world for nearly 2,000 years, to the point where all other gods have been vilified. The virus that is this trickster being has become a pandemic that has eaten away the very soul of most of those he has infected, to the point where even those who say they've left the church still show symptoms of the disease. An example would be when most neo-pagans look at Odin, they see a Norse Yahweh, a firm yet kindly father of the gods, when he was no such thing. Odin was dark. Odin is one of our gods. Zeus is another example, but not quite as dark as Odin. Even atheists, not all, but many, still show symptoms. They continue to be victimized by their time under the influence of his sway. And many of them find a substitute for Yahweh, filling that God-shaped hole in their heart with, for example, fanatical politics. Now, no matter what you might believe, all the other gods will have an influence on you, and you should, for the sake of spiritual wholeness, welcome them. But within the subjective universe of your personal psyche, there should be only one God, and that is the divine aspect of who you are. Most people don't want self-deification, or they can't do it, can't bring it about. They can't bring about self-deification because that place in their heart is still filled. And guess who's sitting there? See this symbol, this work of art? This is from a 1930s French journal in a secret society called Asafel. It features a headless man inspired by the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci and the word Asafel comes from an ancient Greek word meaning headless, in this case referring to no god. Asafel also symbolizes the importance of the carnal, fulfilling the needs of the body, not necessarily the ego mind. And the members of this secret society would have nocturnal torch-lit gatherings in woods near an oak that had been struck by lightning. Their members were required to partake in rituals, perform acts of sexual transgression, and meditate upon the writings of Friedrich Nietzsche and the Marquis de Sade. 
They even contemplated human sacrifice. But it was never actualized, even though some members volunteered to be the sacrificial lamb. And the reason why it didn't happen is because none of them was willing to be the executioner. No one wanted to kill their friend. Led by the writer Georges Bataille, Asafel was an attempt to start a new religion or anti-religion based upon Nietzsche's post-theological epoch. That is, the aftermath of the death of God. But when most experience this death of God, nihilism sets in. And in the midst of such a psychological crisis, Nietzsche wondered, how will we transcend this nihilism? The answer, the Dionysian aspects of existence. It is only through such action, said Nietzsche, that we will be able to live up to the terrifyingly sublime deed of murdering God. Must we ourselves not become gods simply to appear worthy of it, he asks. Nietzsche, Asafel, and now we, the sect of the Horn God, dared to lead one out of the labyrinth of contemporary nihilism and show the way back to the heart of darkness to expose and embrace the horrors of the abyss and hopefully elevate one to the status of the deified self. <laughs>